and I'm excited. We saw both these players on stream yesterday. Uh, Gary and Sam. Sam running that Breloom Chandler. Uh, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. that Breloom Chandler. We didn't see either of those Pokemon. Those were both the, the two left at home throughout that match. Uh, instead, it was that rain mode combined with the Tailwind support from both Palper and Zapdos. And then Kangaskhan, not a mega we see as often now after that big nerf to Parental Bond. All this Intimidate in the format. And uh, the fact that it doesn't get Power Up Punch anymore. Doesn't get Power Up Punch, has a weaker Sucker Punch. Just a lot of things came in between uh, generations and hurt that Kangaskhan. But still can be a relevant Pokemon. And we see that with, with Sam here in the top eight. So Gary on the other side, he has the Pheromosa with the... Uh, uh he has the two big ways to support yeah. that Snorlax, right? It, it's the same belly drum Snorlax we saw up against each other uh, with Quinn and uh, Jeremy in that last match. But we saw support from a Porygon 2 and from a Cresselia there. For uh, uh, the Gary's team, it's support from a Pheromosa to speed swap instead of trying to get Trick Room up and make that slow Snorlax move first. Just give Snorlax a massive speed stat. Yeah, that I mean, that was, that was actually pretty interesting, right? Like, uh, yesterday's mechanics between that, uh, you know, you don't expect Snorlax to be outspeeding things at all. You kind of just expect it to... Uh and then the other support he had for it is that Audino, which, uh, you know, is another Trick Room setter like Porygon 2 and Cresselia, but also offers that Heal Pulse support so that even if, you know, Snorlax gets its berry knocked off or Snorlax needs to be attacking every turn just to make sure that your opponent isn't getting two attacks off every turn, you still have the option to heal. We saw that so valuable in one of those games on stream where Snorlax was attacking every turn, taking 50% damage every turn, and then Ardino was just healing it all off. I mean, that's one of the teams that we actually saw the Oceania International Championships, right? Uh, between uh, Alberto Lara's team, you know? Yeah, the, using the that Gothel, Clefairy yeah. with... with uh, and or Gothitelle with Heal Pulse have been other modes to support that Snorlax in the past. Uh, Audino, kind of another Pokemon that fits that mold. Yeah, it's except, you know, with Audino instead, not necessarily a Pokemon that a lot of people uh, prepare matchups for, and also has access to that regenerator ability, so it can switch in, heal right back up. Yeah, and another trick it has up its sleeve, it's probably the main reason you would choose it over other Pokemon, Simple Beam. Not a move that gets very wide distribution. Simple Beam uh, changes the target's ability to Simple. Simple, an ability that when you boost your stats, doubles that boost. So if you simple give simple to a Tapu Fini once it's already put down its train, it then on every calm mind gets two special attack boosts and two special defense boosts. We see we haven't seen this, the simple beam from that Audino on Gary's side yet, but we do see both the Salamence likely carrying Dragon Dance and that Tapu Fini likely carrying Calm Mind. So simple could be another really important way to uh, speed up those boosts and make those Pokemon uh, too much to deal with too quickly. Yep, we've already mentioned the teams in team preview. Uh, <laughs> that philosophical question yet again. Does a fair, does a Snorlax with a Pheromosa speed boost outspeed a Seismitoad in the rain? Does it? I think it'll depend on Pokemon Train, but I think the Seismitoad is faster. Yeah? You yeah. think so? Yeah. Is that where your smart money is? <laughs> That's my smart money. <laughs> That's not good for your smart money pick of Gary Chan. <laughs> <laughs> I think the important thing for Gary is going to be that, uh, that Tapu Fini. Um, there just isn't uh, all that many ways for uh, Samuel to break it. He does have that Breloom that can be really valuable with Bullet Seed. But other than that, Chandelure, Seismitoad, Pelipper, he also has Zapdos that can Thunderbolt it. But if you get a simple Calm Mind up, then those Thunderbolts don't look like so much damage. And here we go. The leads are sent out. Gary going to lead with Salamence and Tapu Fini. And it looks like Pelipper and Seismitoad are going to take the field here for uh, Sam's side. Uh, now the Intimidate is going to land on both Pelipper and Seismitoad. I don't think it's going to matter that much. Uh, no, uh, we already know that both Seismitoad and Pelipper special po special Pokemon in this matchup. So. I, I wasn't there for that match yesterday, so I, I, w I wouldn't really know. But um, Tapafini is a pretty strong uh, counter towards Pelipper. It does have pretty decent special bulk, and so does, uh, well, can also take some attacks from Seismitoad. Yeah, I mean, Gary immediately seeing the rain mode and then leading his two water-resisting Pokemon straight away. Both Tapu Fini and Salamence aren't going to be too worried about like the muddy water coming out from Seismitoad and can answer with really good damage. Salamence is actually just going to go ahead and switch out. Audino is going to go ahead and take the field, probably going to try to use that simple boom that you mentioned when after uh, Tapu Fini can safely go for a Calm Mind, but Tapu Fini here just going to protect, just going to try to see what attacks are going to come out. As Seismitoad goes for a muddy water, this is going to be a rain-boosted muddy water not sure how bulky Audino can actually be here. That's going to be some decent damage right there, about 40% with an accuracy drop there. 
uh, Seismitoad losing some damage because of, wow, that's a fast Seismitoad there after the Pelipper sets up a Tailwind. Yeah, now Seismitoad at both the 2x speed for Swift Swim and the 2x speed for Tailwind going to be moving very quickly. But the thing with Simple Beam, you do have to have the Simple Beam hit before you start stacking your boosts or it doesn't help you. And so Tapu Fumi protecting itself there, maybe trying to get Simple before Calm Minding, also doesn't want to take a t uh, Hurricane for no reason. Audino actually dodges that Money Water right there, can preserve 40% of its health right there. Uh, not much damage done to Tapu Fini at all. Uh, Seismitoad continues to chip away its chip away at itself. Here comes a Hurricane gonna land into that Audino, but Pelipper just doesn't have enough damage output right there. That would be the KO if it was uh, that Muddy Water connection that missed earlier. Uh, Stopafini retaliates with its own Muddy Water here. Neutral damage on that Seismitoad as Audino actually uses turn to set up Trick Room, so a uh, smart play right there from Gary, and now this Audino can easily set up that Simple Beam on the Topofini. Yeah, if it wants to, or Topofini can just keep going for these big rain-boosted uh, uh, Muddy Waters. We saw how much damage that did to the Seismitoad. Uh, use Gar uh, rather Samuel's reign against him and, and just tr do so much damage with Tapu Fini. Uh, Audino, so many different support options, could also just try to heal Pulse off. It's not that much damage yet onto Tapu Fini, but keeping Tapu Fini totally healthy could be really valuable in this matchup, I think. A lot of options here. Uh, Audino is going to go ahead and switch out. Audino going to be replaced by that Snorlax, so going to try to take advantage of that Trick Room for sure. As Top of Fini using his turn to go for a Calm Mind, not needing that simple ability uh, at all. Just trying to get some, uh, I guess, just some straight up Calm Mind boost here, boosting that special defense and special attack. Pelipper's Hurricane connects on that Top of Fini, not going to even bring it down to under 50%. As Seismitoad uses Muddy Water, connects with both the Snorlax and that Top of Fini. Uh, minimal damage to that Top of Fini after that Calm Mind boost. Uh, no accuracy drop, and Seismitoad is actually almost KO'd. Uh, it actually only has two more attacks before it gets KO'd, so Top of Fini mu can actually start to just target down that Pelipper, but a Muddy Water should be enough to get the KO. Yeah, both. I mean, all you could also just Moon Blast and, and return, pick up a KO that way if you if you don't feel like Snorlax needs to boost this turn. Well, a pretty strong position for Gary. I do think he maybe expected uh, Sam to, to pivot, try to change his field position, and that's why he went for the Calm Mind and, and allowed that extra attack in. Snorlax using Belly Drum here, going to maximize his attack stat. Uh, pretty easy turn here to go for... Uh, a setup move as long as Top of Fini connect on both the Muddy Water and, uh, well, on both Pokemon. And here comes the Muddy Water from that Top of Fini. Connects on both Pokemon. Is it going to be enough to get the KO on that Pelipper? Gets the KO on Seismitoad easily and does get the KO on that Pelipper. And now Snorlax is going to be functioning in Trick Room. Yeah, Snorlax in Trick Room. This plus one special attack, uh, Top of Fini in Rain and Trick Room. Uh, really strong position for Gary here. Totally using Sam's Rain against him and then stacking Trick Room alongside that. It's just uh, such a strong position. And Breloom is going to take the field here. Uh, that can exert some pressure on that Snorlax, uh, even under Trick Room with that very powerful technician boosted Mach Punch. And Kangaskhan actually provides some fake out support too as it comes right back on the field. Yeah, Kangaskhan can fake out one of these Pokemon. Has to be a little careful about faking out Tapu Fini. Might just activate the berry. Uh, not something you want to do with Tapu Fini already at such low health. Um, at the same time, you can't really afford to let Tapu Fini just attack this turn uh, under Trick Room. Boosted threatens giant moon blast against both these Pokemon, or just that Muddy Water would do really good damage to Kangaskhan and a lot to Breloom also. Kangaskhan is going to Mega Evolve, going to get that nerfed uh, Parental Bond ability that was so dominant in uh, the previous generation of games here. Kangaskhan using Fake Out into that Snorlax slot, going to go ahead and make it flinch, bring it down to under 50% as Breloom going for a Mach Punch, going to land in that Snorlax and get the KO, but this opens up the opportunity for Tapu Fini to go for a powerful attack here on to either Pokemon. It's going to be a big avoid there from that Kangaskhan on that Muddy Water. It is going to go ahead and hit that Breloom, though. Not much damage. Oh, wow, actually, for a resist attack, that did a lot of damage right there as the Mist disappears from the field. So there's going to be one more turn of Trick Room. Yeah, one more turn of Trick Room. But with that Mist gone, that means Breloom will be free to Spore if it can protect itself in the next turn and get out of this Trick Room. The Rain gone means that uh, another... Muddy Water likely won't actually KO this Breloom despite the massive damage from the last one. That Intimidate coming out is really valuable, though. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you get a weakened the attacks out of that King's Con and that Breloom. I think we did see uh, Sam not confident that Mach Punch would have KO'd uh, Stormwax from the health it was at, and so decided to add another priority move, not th looking for the flinch from the Fake Out, but the extra damage from Fake Out along with Mach Punch to pick up the KO. And even if then if you miss, you are backed up by the flinch. But that allows Tapu Fini to attack and... and 
unfortunately for Sam, isn't punished so much for allowing that Tabu Fini to attack because Kangaskhan does, does dodge that muddy water. It would have been massive damage. And Salmons is going to go ahead and switch out. Going to save that Intimidate for later as well. So Gary just trying to cycle those Intimidates as best as possible. Audino is going to take the field again as Breloom uses Protect. Uh, not going to want to take another muddy water. As Tabu Fini using Moonblast here, going to land in that Kangaskhan. It is boosted. Uh, that is actually really important that the Kangaskhan dodge that Muddy Water from earlier, and Kangaskhan now using Double Edge. It is going to target down what was that Salamence slot, and that, ooh, procs that berry before that second hit could come out and get the KO on the Audino. So uh, it wouldn't have even KO'd because of the Parental Bond nerf. Yeah, so the Dimensions return to normal, Trick Room gone, but Audino may be healthy enough to get another Trick Room off, but has to worry about Spore now. Uh, Tapu Fini stayed on the field too long. Misty Train is gone, and so Spore is free to come out. Could easily put Audino to sleep and then just KO Tapu Fini. It's the kind of position that Spore can allow you to, as long as you can KO one and put the other to sleep, it's not much your opponent can do. Kangas Khan uses double edge on that Tapu Fini. It does get the KO on that first hit. Not going to be able to activate uh, Gary's Barry at all. And now Kangas Khan hangs on with just a sliver of health. Breloom goes for the Spore. It is going to go ahead and put that Audino to sleep. But Salmons can come in and just easily clean up from here. Yeah, now's the problem. The problem is Snorlax. It's so important when you're trying to play with Breloom plus an attacker that you need at least one of them to be faster than whatever is on the field. Neither of these are going to be faster than Salamence unless uh, Genghis Khan is, is fully invested in speed and, and ends up being a tie. But even then, after two Intimidates, won't be able to pick up the KO on Salamence unless it has the Ice Punch as an option. So uh, really really a few things up in the air here. Uh, if Salamence is able to attack, it of course will have its choice of things to KO. Also maybe important that Kangaskhan has Ice Punch because if it is forced to double edge again, it'll just KO itself out of recoil. So if it has Ice Punch, that's a way for it to do valuable damage without just knocking itself out. And if this, well, if this is Mega Salamence, then uh, Salamence can just Mega Ball around speed both Pokemon anyway, so when you it's come true. down to speed tie, uh, you'd have to rely on this Kangaskhan being one of the hardest hitting Kangaskhans ever and having some critical hit luck on these sucker punches as Breloom is going to protect itself. Uh, maybe if Gary targeted down the wrong Pokemon, that could also be an option. Salamence actually goes for a turn in that Kangaskhan and gets the KO, so that really should do it. Uh, and Gary kind of sealing deal here as Audino takes its first turn, or maybe it's the second turn of sleep. I think it's the first second turn. turn of sleep. Second turn? Yeah, because it was spored before attacking on the previous turn, but it uh, shouldn't matter here. The next Salamence attack will just KO this Breloom. Um, I think looking forward, Sam's got to find a way to not let that Tapu Fini do so much that early in the game. He can't have that rain just turned against him like that. Yeah, uh, Sam is going to go ahead and forfeit that match. Uh, got pretty much as much information as he probably could have gotten anyways. Uh, so one thing that Sam's going to have to do is, you're right, you know, not allow Tapu Fini to set up so easily and also not allow Trick Room to come up so easily either. Yeah, so I think there's two major problems. I think... Uh, can't allow Tabu Fini to get so much free damage, especially with Trick Room up. But also, I don't think he's shown an answer to Salamence at all. Just came in at the end and kind of cleaned up that game. But I think that game could have been a lot more in the balance. And once Salamence hit the field, Salamence would have been enough to carry it. Because if you start looking at Sam's roster, um, there just really aren't that many answers to that Mega Salamence on his side of the field. If Tabu Fini is able to kind of soften some things with Muddy Waters, especially if they're Rain boosted or Calm Mind boosted Muddy Waters, then all these Pokemon start to look like they're in return KO range from Salamence without really much way to respond back. Yeah. Uh, Chandelure? Against Salamence? Well, not against Salamence, but like Chandelure might against be a Tapu better Fini? option. Well, I mean... I don't think Chandelure solves any of your problems. I think Zapdos is a pretty valuable Pokemon, though. Provides another Tailwind, allows you to get fa faster than Salamence. Resist Salamence, And yeah. resist Salamence's return, and then offers another big damage output against Tapu Fini with that Thunderbolt. I think I think the biggest concern for Sam is not allowing Trick Room to get set up again. Uh, that's going to be a huge issue unless you can try to function outside of Trick Room or like inside Trick Room better. Uh, but it looks like Sam's just going to go ahead and lead with Pelipper and Seismitoad as well. Audino and Snorlax are the leads that Gary decides to go with here, and uh, looks like Trick Room can easily be set up here um, unless you can possibly get a critical hit on a Hurricane or a Muddy Water. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, Trick Room, I would expect to be able to go up. I don't think Muddy Water plus Hurricane should be enough to KO Audino. It's pretty bulky. No other option for Fake Out like you might have with the Ludicolo over the Seismitoad. Uh, yeah. Seismitoad now using Muddy Water. Uh, it is going to hit both the Audino and the Snorlax, doing about 45%. And it looks like it's going to be a Super Sonic Sky Strike coming out. 
wow. from this Pelipper here. Not something we see very often at all. Normally, Pelipper opting for that Focus Sash instead of this giant flying attack. Uh, that Supersonic Sky Strike from the base power of Hurricane will be a ton of damage. Hurricane plus Muddy Water definitely wasn't gonna be enough to KO Audino. We're gonna have to see if this is enough. If he can deny Trick Room right here, it could be so valuable. Especially because he's already done enough damage that Snorlax might be in Mach Punch KO range. How terrifying is that to see a big Pelipper? Oh, oh no! It's not enough! Audino no, just on. too bulky! And Snorlax uses Belly Drum, and now Audino can easily just set up the Trick Room and allow Snorlax to try to sweep. So, wow. Uh, bulky Audino and also. Uh, Pelper just doesn't have that much damage output. You know, it has access to like Scald, it has access to Hurricane, which is big base power, uh, but it just, it's special attacks that just isn't enough. Yeah, I think this is uh, another point where Heal Pulse is going to be really valuable, because otherwise we saw Snorlax go down easily to Mock Punch and Fake Out last turn. Snorlax wouldn't be able to recycle itself up to a health uh, level where it wouldn't have to worry about that. But with Heal Pulse coming out towards Snorlax, you can get it actually back to 100% health and then you don't have to worry about that as much. It's an interesting way to get these two on the field together before Breloom's actually out there and try to take advantage of it. Pelipper protecting itself, probably protecting that the, uh, well, nope, it's gonna be a double protect here. Just gonna try to stall it as many turns of Trick Room left. There's still gonna be three turns after this one, but this does open up the opportunity for a heal pulse, and it, there it is, there is a heal pulse. It is gonna go ahead and heal back that Snorlax to full health. Would've been nice to see a recycle weaved in there, if you're Gary. But I think it's important to deny, don't let uh, Sizemore Toad oh get yeah. free attacks off. You want to kind of force those protects if if you expect them. Uh, if I can talk about the lead matchup again for a second, it was a couple turns ago, but it was interesting to me that Sam stuck with his rain mode, kind of got it answered so well, and Tapu Fini stuck with it, and now he's getting it answered so well by a different lead matchup from Gary. Probably Gary leading these, expecting to come up against something other than rain, uh, and still they're enough because that Audino was able to hang on from Supersonic Sky Strike to answer rain just as well as Tapu Fini did. Audino now, now going to switch out. Uh, Top of Fini is going to take the field. It is going to go ahead and set up that misty terrain. And again, Snorlax really has its choice here. Uh, we know that that Pelipper doesn't ha carry a Focus Ash, which it commonly does. Seismato gets the double protect here. Uh, that is going to, again, reduce the amount of turns of Trick Room as Snorlax goes for a turn in that Seismato to protect as Pelipper using Hurricane 100% accurate because of the uh, of the rain. But there's no chance to confuse because of the misty terrain either. Uh, so maybe that's why the top of him came in, and it's just better positioning for uh, Gary in general. Yeah, and it's just another Pokemon. If you can get Top of Fini again with a Calm Mind under Trick Room in rain, you may only get a couple turns of that, but it's just another really valuable <laughs> attacker uh, for this game. Uh, Snorlax already at full health. There wasn't too much for Adino to do. Definitely don't want to Simple Beam your Snorlax and get rid of Gluttony, so just opts to bring in another attacker here. Snorlax uses Return. It is connecting on that Seismitoad. No Protect there. It is the, well, big KO there. One of the biggest offensive threats on Sam's side it has been removed from the field, and here comes a Moonblast from that top of Phoenix doing so much damage right there. Oh. And it gets a special attack drop, too. This Hurricane is not going to be doing much damage at all. It is going to pick up that Snorlax and send it crashing down, but that did, like, 15%. Yeah, maybe looking to start chipping away that Snorlax, try to get in Mach Punch range, but that just, after that Moonblast special attack uh, drop is not the kind of damage you need to be able to do that. Tapu Fini just putting a Moonblast down on the Pelipper so that it can threaten another Moonblast for the KO on the next turn. That means you can be threatening Moonblast towards Pelipper, retor return towards this Kangaskhan, and know you're going to get a KO one way or the other. Uh, if Kangaskhan fakes out in the right spot, maybe prevents Tapu Fini from KOing Pelipper, you could be trading Kangaskhan for another Pelipper attack, but we saw how like invaluable those are uh, non-valuable, those uh, Pelipper attacks are. Kangaskhan, Mega Evolving here, gonna get that parental bond ability. Uh, usually when you see a Kangaskhan out on the other side of the field, you kind of start panicking, but again, Kangaskhan in this format, not as threatening as it was in previous formats. Kangaskhan uses Fake Out, it is gonna land in that Snorlax. More chip damage right there on that Snorlax, trying to get it into range of uh, the Breloom Mog Punch. Pelipper actually protecting, so a fake out protect right there as Kangaskhan actually avoids the rain stops and the Twisted Dimensions return to normal. So this is a little bit better uh, position for Sam. Yeah, this is a much more playable position for Sam. Weaves in a lot of protects during that trick room so that he only ends up, ends up losing one Pokemon despite having that Snorlax with Belly Drum from the get-go. Uh, does still have kind of a damage problem here. Uh, Kangaskhan should be able to KO Snorlax if it has low kick, but Pelipper really not offering much. That means Topu Fini is free to keep putting out damage, maybe KOing Pelipper. And Audino is going to take the field. Uh, instead of that, Snorlax is going to sacrifice that Belly Drum that it has already set up, probably trying to set up a another Trick Room for Snorlax later on. And Low Kick connects on that Audino, bringing it down to about 40%. Uh, 
uh, as Pelipper uses Hurricane. Again, that special attack drop from a bit earlier, that's not going to do much damage at all to that Autono, and it can just heal it right back off with that Regenerator, but it's probably going to get KO'd next turn anyways. Moonblast from that top of Feeney hits that Kangaskhan doing, uh, I'd say, about 30%, maybe 40%. Yeah, Gary kind of using the gravity of that Snorlax there. Knows he would lose it if it stays in the field, no option to protect it, and so it's too valuable to lose, but forcing that double target into it insti that instead just hits Audino, can be regenerated back off, or if Gary doesn't value Audino that much anymore, can just be kind of sacrificed, but it gives Tapu Fini even more turns to get free damage off, start stacking damage against these Pokemon. Only three uh, Pokemon left on Sam's side. You break one more piece out of that, and uh, Sam starts to be kind of short on options. You can't switch anymore. Uh, you can't change field position to like get your rain back with Pelipper. Kangaskhan switches out. Uh, going to preserve that fake out for later on as Audino is going to switch out as well as Salam. Nope, Snorlax is going to take the field instead. Uh, no trick him up for Snorlax. Not as threatening. And Pelipper using Scald here. Hits in that Snorlax slot. No chance for a burn because that Misty Train bringing it to under 50%. But Snorlax has already consumed his barrier from early. And Moonblast actually lands in that Braylon. Going to go ahead and bring it down to Focus Sash range. Yeah, such a dangerous switch to bring in Braylon there because we've already seen uh, Gary Moonblast that slot on the previous turn. Uh, now Misty Train does, though, expire right as Braylon hits the field. Perfect opportunity to start sporing things. The problem is still that Pelipper is not offering anything. It's just not doing enough damage. You know, Braylon can put one to sleep, but if Pelipper can't do anything to the other, maybe can look for like a hurricane confusion or something and some damage with it. Pelipper uses hurricane. Is there going to be confusion here? Is Snorlax even going to be able to move? Does land no confusion there as uh, Breloom goes for a bullet seed. Going to hit that top of Fini. Technician boost the bullet seed. Does so much damage, especially when it's super effective. Gets the KO in just two hits. No need for a third hit there. Uh, super effective damage, and Snorlax now should be able to get the KO on this Breloom. Another big threat removed from the field on Sam's side. And here comes return. Here comes the one damage on that Breloom. Yeah, that bullet seed actually seemed... Uh uh, a little close there. If that second hit hadn't actually KO'd Tapu Fini, it would have eaten its berry and back up pretty healthy. And then you're starting to count how many bullet seed hits. Could have possibly missed the KO there. Uh, it does manage to get the KO with the second hit. And so uh, trades Breloom for Tapu Fini. Um, with Breloom only at 1 HP, that's maybe a good trade, but it's also kind of rough to trade Pokemon. When we're down 3 4 previously, now down 2 3. Yep, and Salmon's comes back in, well, in for the first time this game. But that Intimidate is going to be so big because Kangaskhan just has no way to boost its attack stat. I think this is really similar to the last game. Sam just doesn't really have an answer for Salamence on his team. And then when you like kind of exacerbate that by bringing Salamence in late when everything's been weakened, when the options are way lessened for Sam, there's really no answer for it. I mean, it can just return KO Pelipper. Kangaskhan, if it doesn't have Ice Punch, won't really be able to respond with anything. And then you can just go after Kangaskhan later. Salamence is going to Mega Evolve here. Uh, going to get that Aerial Aid ability. Uh, even though Salamence's ability and all of the eight abilities got nerfed between generations, just a little bit lower damage output, uh, you know, it's still a good Pokemon because of its access to Intimidate. The fake out lands on Salamence, it's going to flinch. Pelipper uses Hurricane, it is going to hit that Snorlax, no critical hit. Snorlax is going to stay out on the field. No confusion either, Snorlax is going to uh, pretty much clean up on that Pelipper with that return, gets a KO, and now it's going to be Kangaskhan versus, well, three Pokemon. Uh, Intimidated Kangaskhan versus three Pokemon. Get that Audino left in the back. Uh, Salamence, that's still very healthy. Um, you know, threatening a lot of damage to their turn. Return from both of these Pokemon uh, is probably enough to KO Kangaskhan. And uh, I just don't see how you either prevent that or just two Salamence uh, returns. Yep, and Kangaskhan goes for the second punch, gets the KO on that Snorlax. And that was only one hit. And it looks like Salamence uses return here. And that, well, kind of does it. I don't think Kangaskhan has any more damage. Oh, just that just straight up KO. KOs. So there you have it. Gary Chan is going to be moving on to the top four here at the Portland Regional Championships and well-played set from both players. Sam just didn't have that answer, like you mentioned, to that Salamence. Didn't have the answer to the Salamence in the back and didn't have the offense with his rain lead to break either of those leads that Gary went with in game one or two. Just fell a little bit short in both cases. Um, yeah, I... If you have enough offense to KO Audino on that first turn, of course, game two goes very differently. If you have some kind of coverage or, or more offense that allows you to break top Buffini more quickly, then game one goes goes differently. But Sam sticks with his rain lead uh, and just doesn't uh, end up finding a path forward with it. And also didn't have any way to break Trick Room either. You know, right. he was hoping in that second game that that... Uh, Supersonic Sky Strike and that Rain Boost and Muddy Water would be enough to KO the Audino, but Audino hung on and was able to set up Trick Room and allow Snorlax to start sweeping. And with different leads, you might have had an answer for Trick Room. You know, you can spore it with Breloom if you don't think that Misty Train is coming in from Tapu Fini. You can fake it out 
with uh, Kangaskhan. You can reverse it with your own Chandelure, but uh, needed the offense of the rain, I guess he felt like. And some of these other Pokemon just have, like we talked about how bad Chandelure's matchup is, it's hard to uh, to bring that and reverse Trick Room with it when it has so many other problems in the matchup. Yep, so Gary moves on to the top four. He'll be facing off against Yuen Hao Lee of uh, Vancouver. On the other side of the bracket, Adrian Sigler, who defeated Alberto Lara, will be facing off against Jeremy Shackett. So, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, well, I'm just happy that yours and my smart monies are still in the running. Huh? There we go. There we go. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, but when we come back, the top four here at the Portland Regional Championships. <laughs> 